How you doing, friends, family, Facebook, and YouTube? This is Ivan with Church of Christ, One Nation, One Power. Today, on the Sabbath day, we have another lesson. And today's lesson will be entitled, <clears throat> John the Revelator. Today's lesson will be entitled, John the Revelator. But before we begin, I want to give thanks to the Most High, Ahia, the Creator, and to His Son, Yeshua, HaMashiach, and also the Ruach, HaKadosh. All right? And also, I ask the Most High that He blesses this lesson today, and that He give us knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Jews and Gentiles, if you have your book, the sealed portion of the brother of Jared. We're going to be in 1st Aki chapter 11. 1st Aki chapter 11. And in this, in this chapter of Aki, there's three things about John that we're going to find out. Number one, John is a high priest under the order of Machelvin. Now let's go to 1st Aki chapter 11, verse number 36. Let's get that real quick. 1st Aki chapter 11, verse number 36. And it came to pass that the imposter who killed James often traveled to the city of Antioch. And he, by deceit and subtlety, discovered who was in stride first among them from one of the twelve in that place and it was John and it was John he being one of the high priests after the order of Machesotech and this imposter discovered John unto the kitten now the kitten he's a Greek now number one John, he's a high priest under the order of Machazotek. Number two and number three, we're going to get into the story of that. But before we read about that story, let's read verse 40 and 41. Because right now, John is about to be arrested and sent and sent away. Okay? Verse 40. And it came to pass that when they took John, people grieved and many of them followed after those who took him and they left their homes to follow and there was a body of them to exceed 2800 Hebrews and they all gathered about the house of the overseer in Antioch and the overseer greatly feared their numbers notwithstanding they were not armed so the Israelites, they weren't on, okay? And he sent a man out to see them. And the man said, Select ones among you and send them and to see the overseer, that you may make your desires known unto him. And they sent three elders to meet with him. And he agreed not to kill John, but he must needs arrest him for it was the command of the kitten. And should the people demand his release, the armies of the kitten would swoop down upon them all, even those who dwelt at Antioch. And he also agreed, and he agreed also, Salakia, to no more pay heed to the imposter. Now, number one, John the Revelator. He's a high priest. He's a Machesotech high priest. Now, there's two more things we're going to find out about John the Revelator. But we must read. Now, 1st Aki chapter 11. And we're going to read verses 46 through 62. Verse 46 through 62.
came to pass that John was alone for many years upon the land of Bedad. And these solitary circumstances could not prevent him from tenderly caring for the needs of Messiah. And it came to pass that John lived in a cave in the east of a mountain, and he would not eat the provisions of the kitchen. So John, he's not gonna eat the food of the Greeks, okay? And we're gonna find out, find out why. And the guards kept them for themselves. And not far down from the home of John was a spring of water. And he was now in his 65th year. So John is 65 years old at this time, okay? And it came to pass in those days, the husband, the husband of Navila was brought to be captive with John. So Navila husband, He's about to get, he's about to be arrested. And him and John is going to be cellmates, okay? Notwithstanding he being full of years. And the two young men were made prisoners with him. Now the food that was sent by the Kentum was unclean. Now the food that was sent by, sent by the Kentum, they were unclean. For the people of the church and the guards grew accustomed to keeping it for themselves. So John and the other Hebrews, they didn't want to eat the food of the Kenton because it was unclean. Sounds like they was eating swine's flesh, pork. And the guards knew that they couldn't eat it. So the guards, they ate the food themselves, okay? And when the husband of Navila, when she came, he would not eat the unclean food. So her husband wouldn't eat the unclean food, okay? For he said, it would be a shame for God of Israel. It would be a shame before the Most High. You do know the Most High will kill you if you touch that pork. Some of y'all still eating it. And the Most High will kill you. And John had lived on flesh and milk of wild goats and the herbs of the land. And he had written great things upon their skins. Now, John, at this time, he's writing on the skins of the wild goats. OK. And when this man would not eat after a few years, he died in the lair of John. Now, Nahila, her husband died because he wouldn't eat the food from the Greeks, okay? So basically he starved himself to death. And it was the 17th year of John. And when the old man died, the Kittim were about to cast him into the sea. When John approached and asked that his body be sent to his people to be buried as their customs required it of them, that he be laid to rest in a certain way and the guards feared to not grant him his requests, lest he should discover them to their overseers for having kept all the provisions for themselves. Now the guards, they didn't want John to snitch on that they wasn't, you know, that John wasn't eating their food and that the, the prisoners were eating the food. So they was afraid that John was going to tell the kitten that the old man wasn't eating. And the guards didn't want, want the, the kitten to know that they wasn't feeding them and that they were eating all the food. Now what happened to my music? Y'all bear with me. Bear with me, what happened to my music? Come on, nine minutes in. There we go. We have verse number 51. And it came to pass that John asked for the wrappings and preparations to prepare the body. And when he had received them, 
he concealed all his writings inside the wrappings. So John is hiding all his writings in the wild goat skin, okay? He's concealing it. And he wrapped it counterclockwise. So we're going clockwise. Counterclockwise is going to the left, okay? So he's wrapping the Vila husband body in sheepskins counterclockwise, okay? to cause Navila to unwrap the clothes in order to wrap them correctly. And in this way, she discovered what he had written inside. Now, Navila, she just discovered that John, he was writing on animal skin, okay? And it was in this way that the great prophecies of John concerning the tribulation of the last day were sent out unto the people of the church. And it was by this Salakia. And it was by the selfless acts of this woman, Navila and her family, that John is in the end days, able to continue to tenderly nourish Salakia, able to continue to tenderly nourish Messiah, insomuch that he can accomplish his task in allowing the wicked to be destroyed. For these writings, for these writings are of great worth to Messiah. For by them, the people of the church in the days of tribulation may know to be instructed as to how to proceed and that which is written thereon are the provisions of John that he had as a lad when Messiah was in the tomb. And the great things he saw shall be made bare and become clear even unto the wicked in the last days. And the reward of those who thus assist the minister to the needs of Messiah shall be great at that day. And the writings of John are they not disclosing the the very manner in which the people of the church may assist Messiah in overcoming the wicked in the end times. And this, that Messiah can establish righteousness upon the earth for a multitude of days. Now, now, let's concentrate on verse 56. Pay attention to verse 56. The priest of Mahan is in verse number 56. Pay attention. Now, the altar of John, where he intervened to establish help for Messiah, was at a spring of water, and it was a large flat rock embedded in the mountainside, with a crack running down from the top of the north side to the middle, and water dripped out of the crack continually, and it would fill a large pot overnight. And when John stood before his altar, he stood in a small pool formed by the water, and he faced, and he faced west. Hebrew. Why would John be facing west? Pay attention. The, pre the priest of Mahan is in verse number 56. Let's get a precept. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 46, verse number 1. Let's see. Let's see which way John was facing. Hebrews, pay attention. Ezekiel chapter 46, verse 1. Thus saith the Lord God, the gate of the inner court that looketh toward the east, that looketh toward the east. Why is John facing west? Pay attention, Israel. Shall be shut the six working days 
but on the Sabbath it shall be open. And in the day of the new moon it shall be open. When we pray, ladies and gentlemen, we face the east, not the west. I got you, priest of my heart. Isaiah chapter 28, verses 9 through 11, we read line upon line, precept upon precept. Remember, we face east, not west. Verse 57. And the altar of John was called by the people of the church. After they reviewed the writings of John, the rock of Bedad, and the Lord would meet often with John at the rock of Bedad, and had the midwives that attend his birth been there, they would have plainly seen why Simahaza, Satan, the devil right there, okay, cried out, my kingdom, my kingdom, for John at the rock of Bedad shook the very foundations of the kingdom of Simahaza, the devil, okay? And in the end, his revelations and what he established there will bring the end of it and prove the entire overthrow and destruction of the domain of, of the domain, of the domain of Simihaza by the hand of Messiah. Verse 58. And Aki saw upon the rock of Badad, out of which flowed pure water, which established understanding that will cause Messiah to be tenderly helped and watched after to bring about his triumphant second coming. And it came to pass that Aki saw that the rock of Badad would remain all the days of the earth, and it will be the element of righteousness during tribulation times, and the righteous will use it as the rocks of witches. Me. That Simihaza and all who follow him will be in the end utterly alone and solitary and cast off from the element of righteousness, which is the second death. And John was a brother to the thunder, being known to God as Ben Rishon. that word I'm sorry and Messiah named him and John named Messiah Lord of Lords and John named Messiah Lord of Lords and established that Messiah should be in the end be fully triumphant in all his missions and tasks with men for his father and it came to pass according to the prophecy revealed by James that John performed a great work for the Lord. And in, the, and in his 72nd year, meaning now that John is what? 72 years old, okay? John was standing before the rock of Bedad, and he was affirming Shabbat. And one of the young men was sounding the trump of assembly when a storm arose, and it swept over the land of Bedad. And the waves of the sea cast themselves upon the shore heavenly. And the thunder shook the earth. And when the storm was past, pay attention, John was gone. And when the storm, storm was past, John was gone. Repeat that. And when the storm was past, John was gone. And the trumpeteer said he could see his long white hair shining with the flashes of lightning. And when he could not be found, the kitten 
search for him, but he was not there. And the young men who were prisoners there said that the thunder took him. And the young men who were prisoners there said that the thunder took John. But the guards laughed and said, No, surely he has been swept out to the sea. Verse 62. And Aki asked the Lord, How is it so, Lord, that the thunder could take him? And the Lord said, That John was translated like unto Enoch of old. And as Enoch went into Eden and lived there, even so was John translated into the thunder. For thunder feels that the Lord our Messiah will have his way. And it announces that the desire of the heart of Messiah are to be assured. Now this was our last verse. Verse 62. Remember at the beginning, I said that there were three things about John the Revelator that we should know. Number one, John is a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. One. Number two, John wrote the revelation on the skins of goat. He wrote the revelations on the skins of goat. And he wrapped the body of the Havala, if I'm saying her name correctly, counterclockwise. So when so when she received her husband's body, she had to correct the wrapping, and she noticed that John had written some. She noticed that John had written Revelation on sheep's on animal skin. Okay, that's number two. Number three. John was taken like unto Enoch. During the storm, when lightning came, it hit him. The most I took him. Just like Enoch. Just like Enoch. So John the Revelator, he never died. Anyway, that's the three things you need to know about John the Revelator. He's a high priest, a Chesedic high priest. He wrote the revelation on the skins of animals and also the most I took him in a lightning bolt. Took him. Well, anyway, Jews and Gentiles, hopefully you enjoyed this lesson today. Hopefully you understood the words that I was reading. It's now 2 o'clock in the morning. 2.16 in the morning. You guys take care. Happy Sabbath day. Jews and Gentiles. Remember. Repent. Get baptized. And keep the commandments of the Most High. Jews and